And Vita is a science application specialist with the Rocky Mountain Research Station. She's the principal investigator for the Northern Rockies Fire Science Network, and she lives in northwest Montana. Her research interests are the individual and organizational influences on the success of science delivery and on the use of science by fire managers in the Forest Service, Park Service, and DLM, drawing from theories on human behavior, communication, and organizational culture and management. And today, she's going to tell us about the Northern Rockies Fire Science Network. And so, Vita, we do see your title slide, and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you for including me in the panel today. I appreciate the opportunity to reach out to this group. I wanted to share a few resources that might be of interest, specific, specifically of interest to this group. So um, without further ado, the Joint Fire Science Program, for those of you, I know a lot of people are familiar, but in case there's anyone on the call who isn't, the Joint Fire Science Program is an interagency program that has been funding fire drills research since 1998. And uh, about eight years ago, they start, started putting substantial resources not just into funding research, but also connecting it to the field. And so you can see a map here of what we call the Fire Science Exchange Network that evolved out of that effort. You can also see the Northern Rockies boundary, which um, we've been up since 2012, and we're a partnership between the agency and the universities and colleges that are listed. So really, the Fire Science Exchange Network is um, aimed at accelerating awareness, understanding, and use of fire science within ecologically similar regions. We used to be called consortia, so some of you might be familiar with the older name. And the reason that we changed the name to the Exchange Network is to acknowledge that it's not just scientists talking to managers. It really is an exchange among managers, scientists, and interested stakeholders. So today I'll be talking about the Northern Rockies Fire Science Network, which is just one of the 15 fire science exchanges. We all basically do the same types of activities. In this day and age, it's really nice to be able to say that we have some capacity to add to organizing uh, workshops and field trips to actually get people out in the field, kicking the dirt, and talking about important issues within this given region. We host webinars. We summarize and synthesize research into uh, shorter, more accessible documents from the peer-reviewed publications. We all have online newsletters. And then what I'll spend a little bit of time today showing you is our searchable publication and webinar databases here in the Northern Rockies. And then um, the various fire science exchanges, some are on Facebook, some are on Twitter, we're on Twitter. And our tagline is just bringing people together and sharing knowledge. So that's really what we do. And most of the resources that I show you today, well, all of the resources I show you today will be relevant to the Northern Rockies. I understand I was invited to participate because we have had a couple of really big fire years in the Northern Rockies, and we have some uh, unique issues here. So all of the resources are relevant to the Northern Rockies, but actually quite a few resources are relevant nationally as well. Just to give you a sense of who we serve here in the Northern Rockies, and that largely represents our land base, a uh, high proportion of managers and researchers. And we have folks from all around the world and from a bunch of states that I've listed there, the ones that are uh, most commonly represented in our membership. One of the topics that's really prevalent here in the Northern Rockies is wilderness fire. We've been, the region has been a leader nationally uh, over the decades um, of promoting wilderness fire program and long duration fire. So we've, we've done a few things. We had a workshop and field trip on the Spotted Bear Ranger District, the Bob Marshall Wilderness in 2016. We'll be having another one coming up this summer on the east side of the Bob Marshall with the Rocky Mountain Ranger District. And we also have interviewed about 30 wilderness fire champions within the region, um, going all the way back to those who started the program back in the 70s. And we're really trying to understand what are the challenges, what are some of the solutions, what works, what hasn't, what's different between uh, doing this in the 70s versus today? Was it harder then? Is it harder now? So that's a big emphasis. Um, we are these videos that are referenced on the slide can be accessed through our past event webpage for that workshop in 2016. But we're also in the process of developing some videos based on those interviews that 
um, folks can use moving forward to learn from those that have been working in this arena for a long time. We also host, uh, here are some of the other events that we've hosted recently. A couple weeks ago, we just got back from uh, hosting a long duration fire and reburn um, field trip and workshop in Yellowstone National Park looking at a 2016 maple fire that burned within the footprint of the 1988 fires there. That's really, reburns have really become a recurring issue here in the Northern Rockies as well as other places I know. And so we've had quite a bit of focus on that and long term vegetation recovery as well as some of the more common topics like field treatment effectiveness and post-fire regeneration. So the reason I put this slide up is if you look at the bottom, it shows that we actually have pages for all of these past events. And so people that don't have the luxury of participating in an individual workshop or field trip can go to these past event pages and find um, videos sometimes of the presenters, uh, written summaries of the topics that were covered, publications that are put out by the participating scientists. And so if there was an event that you were interested in but you weren't able to participate or if you're just interested in a topic, uh, you can access those past event pages. We've also, you, you know, the core um, audience for the Northern Rockies Fire Science Network really is public land managers and scientists. However, we've been expanding that recently because so many of our managers express uh, interest in better connecting with the public around uh, fire and fire management. And so we participated with uh, Paul Hesburgh and a whole bunch of partners this past year or two to um, bring that presentation to a whole bunch of communities in Montana and Idaho to get the conversation uh, going. And then, really exciting, we just finished a series of art exhibits called Conversations Through the Smoke that we did in partnership with the University of Idaho. And the goal here was to actually get folks who are already involved in fire. There's quite a bit of artistic talent within the fire community, if you haven't noticed yet. And so um, this was a really exciting way to connect some of the insights around science and art to the public around fire, and we're in the process of developing a web page to, to show some of this art and feature the artist. Uh, so those are some of the in-person events. To me, that's the most rewarding part of the work is actually connecting people and bringing research needs from the managers to the scientists and bringing the scientists and their knowledge to the table as well. Uh, we also do some summaries and syntheses. Again, you can see the topics that are coming up repeatedly here in the Northern Rockies. Can wildland, to what extent can wildland fire be used as a field treatment and under what conditions? That's some research by John Parks. And then there are several scientists participating in trying to understand those issues. And so we also have a summary um, from Camille stevens Thurman. So the big part of what I wanted to share with you guys today is our searchable publication database, which now has almost 4,000 publications, reports, and other documents. And they're summarized by topic, and what you'll find in our database that you won't find in any other of the searchable databases is we actually have a three-tiered hierarchy of topics to try to help people access uh, science on particular topics. And so you can see here some of the topics I pulled out and subtopics that I thought might be of interest to this group. So not only do you find publications and resources on fire behavior, but you can find them categorized according to the topics that you see here. Uh, same thing for some of the other human dimensions. We have actually three tiers, so if you go down to organizational effectiveness, you'll actually then find literature related to decision making. If you haven't checked out this database, there is some really cool stuff in here. So I would recommend just pulling it up. Once you click on a topic, then it gives you an op option to click on subtopics. And this is just some of the examples of, of interesting uh, topics that are covered. We also have a searchable webinar and video database with about 650 webinars and videos that are categorized according to those same topics. I've just listed some. These are updated all the time. And so I just listed some of the recent additions to our webinar and video database. But if you're looking for something specific, you can check here. Uh, what you won't find in our databases 
is something uh, specific to ecosystems outside the Northern Rockies that don't also occur in the Northern Rockies. But again, there's a lot of topical information that is relevant uh, well beyond the Northern Rockies. So I would encourage you to check that out, even if you're not looking for something specific, if you're just looking for an interesting uh, webinar or a video to watch. And also, um, we are making an effort here in the Northern Rockies to make science related to the human factors of firefighter safety more accessible. And one of the places that you'll find those resources is in this webinar and video database. So uh, as you can see, we have a lot of resources in each of those databases. So we started something new called Hot Topics. So if somebody's interested in a particular topic like repeated fires, you can go to these Hot Topics on our website. And actually, it pulls everything, including upcoming events, past events, uh, webinars and videos. And then the documents are sorted by research brief syntheses and publications and reports. So uh, these are the topics that we have covered that way now. So if you're interested in wilderness fire or fire and traditional knowledge or um, ecological effects of severe fire, you can actually just go to the hot topic and it'll pull all the resources we have related to that topic. I also wanted to let you know that we put out a bi-monthly newsletter when we did our needs assessment and focus groups before we even started the Northern Rockies Fire Science Network. What, two of the, the things that folks said to us is one is I want things searchable by topic and ecosystem. So you just saw examples of that. And those resources are also searchable by ecosystem. And they said, don't inundate our inbox. <laughs> so we really do only send out uh, newsletters every other month. Once in a while, we'll send Once in a while, when we have an upcoming event, we'll send out a specific mailing. Um, but if you're interested in uh, access to upcoming events, uh, and then on the right, you can see, oh, well, you can't see it here in the picture, but below webinars, we also have a whole list of recent publications and reports and some other information in that bi-monthly newsletter. So if you would like to sign up for that, you can subscribe. You can see on this slide, which is uh, my last slide up on the right, where that is. You're welcome to contact me or our coordinators if you have any questions or suggestions for things that we can do to better serve you. And then I also put up the map of all the fire science exchanges, since I know this is a national webinar, to let you know that all of these other fire science exchanges have resources that are very similar to ours. The databases, I don't think, are searchable to the level of detail. But um, so you can go to the JFSP website and click on a map for any of these regions and get additional information. And uh, Tanya, that's what I wanted to share today. So, All right. Great. Thanks, Vita. And yeah, our listeners are from all over the country today. But I think um, the information that you showed, even though it is the Northern Rockies Fire Science Network, you know, having these searchable databases and the understanding that this is a nationwide program is it's really important and valuable. So that's great to share all that with us. Thank you.